Hey, this is going to be a little fun. What we're going to be doing is checking out the version 6 of Elementary OS. This is their second beta release, and they've been working on this release for uh, quite some time. Now, this is based off of Ubuntu 21.04, the LTS version, but obviously they've added a lot of their own stuff. And it's a very up-to-date, great operating system. I've been playing around with it for a little bit on my uh, laptop here. And uh, for this video, what we're going to actually be doing is installing it on another computer. This is recording through a, a capture card, so if it looks a little uh, fuzzy or anything, I do apologize for that. It's literally the cheapest capture card in existence that I went ahead and bought. But with all that aside, why we're installing it is because the installer is brand new. And it is a beautiful installer. Uh, they've been working on it for some time in partnership with System76, and what we're going to go ahead is go ahead and run through it. So the first thing, it's a little side-by-side -side thing, and I'll actually put up a little picture here of them uh, sketching out the original design quite a while back. Um, we see it's a beautiful little side-by-side -side thing here, so we got English, let's go ahead and select that. And under English, we have different types of English, which ours is United States. And then they have the keyboard menu. We're going to go with the US. And then here we're going to go with the regular default US keyboard. So select that. And now here is where it's going to be a little bit different. We have the try demo mode, which is basically getting you into the live session so nothing will be saved. And you're just running off of the USB, just how you would with any other Linux live session. We have erase disk and install, which is what most people are going to end up using. Basically, whatever disk drive you have in your computer, you're going to end up wiping and installing over that. And then we have custom install. If we go ahead and go to custom install real quick, I can just kind of show you what that looks like. Here we have the different drives or uh, different partitions here. And this is kind of like a G-parted type thing where you can go ahead and create different custom partitions. Uh, you're going to want to use this menu if you're trying to dual boot with anything. Most Linux installers do have a menu like this, but it's just how they went ahead and changed. It's pretty cool. Uh, for me, I'm going to go ahead and erase the disk and install. I'm going to select the hard drive or the um, M.2 SSD that is in this computer. And then I'm going to go ahead and erase and install. But before it goes ahead and does that, you're going to want to select if you want any encryption. Now here, you have the option to don't decrypt or in choose or choose the password. This will basically uh, make your drive, you have to unlock it with a password uh, whenever you restart your system or anything like that. Uh, it's very secure. I would recommend you do this if it's your primary machine and you have uh, important data on it, such as uh, banking information, things like that. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and do not encrypt this. And then it's going to begin the installation process. Now there's really not much that it shows here. We can see this uh, elementary OS logo slightly changing as it goes. Uh, if you do want to see exactly what your system is doing, you go ahead and click on this and that will bring up the uh, terminal. So when this is all done, we'll go ahead and uh, jump on in. All right, so we are booting into our system now. It completed the install. And it did restart before I got to show you the screen, but it just basically is a green check that says, uh, congratulations, you've installed Elementary OS. So when it boots up here, what it's going to do is uh, get me to create my profile. So this is basically kind of the same thing we just ran through. So it's English, English US, default. And here is where we create our account. So it's a post installation thing. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real fast. There we go. So I'm just going to go ahead and click finish setup here and we can see the login screen. So I'm just going to go ahead and log into Elementary OS for the first time on this machine. And here we go. So you can see that this is an early access build and it's going to bring up some unknown issues and things like that such as uh, the curated apps are not available yet in the app center. Visually they still have some work to do and some features are missing and incomplete. So let's go ahead and run through this real quick. It says welcome. You have some links here to uh, get you started. If I go next again, choose your look. Now for now, I'm going to go ahead and skip that because we're going to be getting, getting into that in just a moment. So I'm going to leave that at default. You have the nightlight option. And then under housekeeping, you can set it to automatically delete these files after 30 days. We'll go ahead and go next. Uh, I'm going to skip the online accounts and I'm going to skip the app center. And then from here, you can see we are ready to go. So I'm going to get started. So before I do anything, I'm going to connect to a Wi Fi network real quick. Let's go ahead and connect my network. And visually, one of the things you're going to notice is they went with the round corners. So we have a lot of different round corners. Well, 
the whole entire system UI is round corners now. So if I go ahead and open something up, such as the system settings, you can see the corners are rounded here. They are rounded just about everywhere. So that's one of the main visual changes here. And one thing I want to go ahead and do real quick is adjust my display resolution. So I'm going to go ahead and select this, and then we're going to switch this up to 1080p so you all can... So it's a, just a little bit more crisp. Ooh, that looks a little worse. Not, like I said, this is not the, a good capture card. Okay, that, that's a little better. We'll just leave it at this. One thing that's new is this uh, scaling factor right here. Uh, you have one times, two times, and three times scaling. So that's something that's new and... Uh, well welcomed feature to be added. Another thing you may notice, it's kind of hard to tell because this capture card is trash, but they did change the system wide font default from uh, Open Sans to Enter Fonts, so it just looks a little bit better. It's a little bit more crisp, and they did change how the colors work, so it's based on grayscale instead, so the colors will uh, uh, be a little bit, just pop a bit better. Uh, one thing that they changed, as we can see over here, if we go over to our notification panel here, They've improved this, so there are separate bubbles for separate notifications, and overall it's just gotten a whole clean up here. Do not disturb, you can go ahead and clear all your notifications like that, and now we have no new notifications. Now another thing that is a very good improvement is the um, appearance. So if we go over to the uh, desktop settings here under personal, this is where we could go ahead and change our appearance. So we have light and dark, Let's go ahead and switch it to the dark theme. Before, uh, you have these toggles for every specific application that you'd have to toggle over and do that for anything you want in dark. Now, the dark theme is system-wide and it's actually integrated very, very well. So for example, if I open up their app center, you can see this is now also following that dark theme right out of the gate. We have a whole bunch of updates, but I'm not gonna really worry about that right now. Close this out. And additionally here, if we look down, they have accent colors. So blue is selected by default, and you can see this is blue. If I go up here and look at these toggles, you can see this check mark is blue, this little toggle switch is blue. Uh, we go ahead and change that. So let's say I wanted uh, green. I don't, but uh, you can see it changes to green over here. And if I go up over here, you can see that all that's green now too. So you could go ahead and change those accents. And then for text size, we have small, large. You go ahead and change all that stuff. Another thing that's kind of different is if we go over to About. So if I go over to Under Administration and to System, open this up. This is uh, laid out a little bit differently here. So we have Elementary OS Early Access. It's running the 5.8 kernel. And like I said earlier, it's running 20.04 LTS. Down here we have some shortcuts to check for updates, send feedback, and restore all your settings to default. 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 Uh, go under hardware, you can see what's going on on your system. Uh, and then if I go over to firmware, this is where you can go in and get better driver support and things like that. Now visually everything's just a little bit flatter and just looks better in my opinion. Uh, under files, there's been some improvements here. So they, they're using a hybrid navigation. So instead of having to like double click your folders, you just give them a single click and it takes you to the next folder. And for some people, they don't like that because then you like accidentally click on a picture and then that picture opens up in one click. But that's not how it works. It's single click to navigate directories while it is a double click to open any files. And you can see if you're familiar with Elementary OS, just some of the uh, little minor visual improvements that they've made. So if I go ahead and close that out, one other thing, I can't really show you very well, but if I go under mouse, mouse and touchpad and gestures, there are a lot of different uh, gestures that you could do, gesture support, gesture, God, I can't talk today gesture support so four fingers three fingers you can change what specific movements on your trackpad do if you're running a laptop or you have an external trackpad now another really big update is the uh, flat pack support flat pack support is shipping out of the box and that alone is cool but what's really cool is all of their native applications are switching over to the flat pack format which that's going to be really cool because if you're somebody who really likes the elementary OS applications, they're going to be really easy to get on your system no matter what you're running as long as you do have Flatpak support. Now with that said, the App Store or the App Center is going to be mostly Flatpak stuff and it's not necessarily going to be hosted out of Flathub. They're going to have their own repository 
for their own flat pack. So that's something you may want to consider, but that's just really cool because they are choosing that as kind of a good default system-wide and maybe even someday Linux-wide um, application format. So in general, I'm really liking what I'm seeing with this beta release. Uh, on this system, it's incredibly snappy. I've been, like I said, I've been using it on my laptop for a little while, and I'm in the process of trying to teach myself Python, and I've been doing that through elementary OS, and I've been having a very good time doing that. And something I'm incredibly impressed in is their, um, th this was before the beta even, their default applications are absolutely outstanding. Their mail, their web browser is based on Firefox. It's awesome. Uh, their App Center, uh, their App Center is by far one of the best. It's so good that the uh, Pop Shop by System76 is essentially a fork of this. As you can tell, there are some incredible uh, visual similarities that you will notice. And even over here under the uh, installed and our available updates and all that good stuff. So that basically concludes this video going over the second beta of elementary OS. I'll have links to numerous articles. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and open this up real quick. On the elementary OS blog, we have this article. Now, this article is talking all about the beta, but it's awesome because it references other articles that you're going to want to talk about, such as the Let's Talk About the OS 6, uh, the platform changes, multi-touch gestures. So this article highlights everything. And then we have these articles that go out and go really in depth on some of the future changes that I barely brushed on in this video. So I would definitely go ahead and check that out. And with all that said, I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. Uh, if you did not, go ahead and dislike it. Uh, leave a comment telling me what you think about this and is this something that is worth uh, maybe even installing on your machine. Uh, please subscribe and ring that bell so you do not miss future uploads. With all that said, once again, have a beautiful day and goodbye.